What's up, as well, fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Back with me, Rocky Padilla, and tonight I have a special guest. <laughs> The new head coach from Bima Perkasa Jogja, Coach David Singleton. Coach, how are you? And welcome back to Indonesia. Hey, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, happy to be on the show with you. And uh, I'm very happy to be back in Indonesia coaching. I've been waiting for this moment. I heard you from Oakland. That's right, man. Oakland, must, California. Yep. Must be a big Warriors fan. Man, grew up, grew up watching the Warriors, going to the games when I was a little kid, and uh, they weren't a good team back then. They were actually the worst team in the NBA. So uh, I came from humble beginnings with the Warriors, and uh, I'm a, I'm a real Warriors fan from a long time ago. Since so, yeah. Baron Davis days or Earl Boykins days? Before that, man, even Chris <laughs> Mullen, Mitch oh, wow. Richmond, Tim Hardaway, all the way back, all the way back, man. So oh, yeah, how sad were you, man, when you heard about Clay? Yeah, you know, that was a tough one. Uh, Clay Thompson, you know, he's mean so much to the Warriors and even the community. He's a, just a great guy. And, uh, you know, he's a Hall of Fame player. So, obviously, he wanted to get back, and he was working his, well uh, back back into shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that to happen, you know, it's unfortunate. But I believe that he's still got time, and uh, if he can come back from it again, and I think he'll be okay by next year. How much faith do you have in Kelly Oubre and James Wiseman? <laughs> got a lot of faith, man. You know, I'm actually, you know, I'm always going to be optimistic with them. Uh, I, I like Wiseman, the pick. Uh, he's a, you know, I think he's a future uh, star, to be honest. If he gets a jump shot going, I think he has a skill set to be good. It's kind of like Anthony Davis, potentially. And then I think Ubre and Wiggins, Wiggins bring a lot of length and size and defense. And so I think they'll be surprising, man. I don't, I don't think it's, a, they'll be as bad as people mm -hmm. might think, to be honest. I do. Okay, that's enough of the NBA talk because we can talk all about right. NBA all day. All day long, man. Uh, no, no. Now let's get to some Indonesian basketball. So you've been there about five days now in Jogja? Yep, just five days just today. Exactly, five days. Have you memorized all your players' names? Man, I think so. I think so. Actually, the first two days were real tough. And now I'm pretty sure I got everybody's name down. I'm, I'm not bad at remembering names. I'm not bad. Yeah. I know, I know. You got good memories. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I try I try to. You know, I think it it also helps. You know, I can get their names. And then when I yell at them, right, they respond <laughs> quick. I don't just say, hey, you. So, uh, no, it's good. They, they've been great. And uh, they've been real responsive to the training over the first couple of days. So it's been good. It's so been who good. was the first player that you scream at? <laughs> Man, you know what? Probably February. Probably February. To be oh, honest. the oldest one. Yeah, the oldest <laughs> one, man. Me and him, me and him have a nice uh we have a nice relationship. Mm -hmm. It's fun. You know, we understand each other. And, and I and I really leadership standpoint. Um, but you know, you got to get on your best players in order to uh for the younger players to understand. So uh February and some of the older guys I got on first. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me get your first impressions of your team. Yeah, you know, uh, first impressions were uh, there's talent, you know, to be honest, uh, there is. Uh, for whatever people think of, you know, Beam in the past, obviously the success hasn't mm. been there. Uh, but there is talented players and there's people that are capable uh, of, of performing. And so we just have to put it all together. Uh, they have to understand my system, which they're doing every day. And uh, they're committed. You know, these guys work really hard. They respect the game. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot to be there. So we just have to work hard, mm -hmm. put the time in, and uh, and keep keep after it. But I like the group, and uh, I'm happy with what they're doing so far. Okay, you have a longer <laughs> preparation right now, this season, not like last season. <laughs> so <Exactly>. what, <laughs> what do you want to accomplish with these guys before the season starts? Um, you know just uh them to understand me as a coach and me to understand them first of all first off and then secondly understanding uh, our system and how we like to play in the past bima uh it's no disrespect to anybody but they played a little bit slower than mm -hmm. other teams and they they like to walk the ball up they like to play kind of a half court style of game and i'm not i'm not that type of coach mm -hmm. uh, i like to play fast i like to play up and down i like to get in your face 
And so that's the kind of defense and the uh, and offense we're gonna be we're gonna be looking to do in style of play. So that's something that these guys got to get used to. It's not gonna take a week. It's gonna take some time, and it already has uh, had its ups and downs. But uh, these guys are these guys are definitely all bought into it and willing to learn. And so uh, that's kind of what we want to do is uh, is in- implement our system early on. And then again, like like you said, I have more time, so I get to work on skills. Right, we get some skill development. Uh, with some of these guys and uh, try to try to uh, get their progress to, to rise a little bit. Okay, this season is a little bit different. There's no there's no imports, all local players. Do you have a different approach of coaching for this kind of situation? Uh, it's a great question, man. I think it's great that, uh, you know, that is happening. You know, I think obviously everyone doesn't agree with that. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because it actually – makes me coach harder and a little bit better it, it kind of shows what i can do with 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 guys and when kind of it's a level playing field so to speak um and so i think it's good for the country i think it's good for the players to kind of showcase their abilities maybe more than they can with import players that take 20 25 30 shots in a game <laughs> so i think these guys are going to kind of be excited about that opportunity um of course you know i'm used to import players and it would be nice but uh, I don't think it's a problem for this year uh, to to do that, and I think that the the the, the local players will have a stage uh, to be on, and they get to showcase their abilities a little bit more. Your front court are very is very slim. Maybe Ristu, maybe Rayleigh. Do you have any plan that trying to recruit another big guy, or how do you gonna overcome that part of the game? Well, uh, the good thing is the way that my culture and system is set up, uh, we're going to be scrappy, we're going to be fighters, we're going to be tough. And so, of course, we're going to be a little bit undersized, but that's okay. Um, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. We'll have game plans and systems set up for each team that we play, uh, how to combat that, the people with size. And I'm going to try to get as much as I can out of Rayleigh and Restu, um, try to bring their game to the next level, and then uh, – of course, you know, I'm always looking for somebody else so to help us, uh, to back us up. And who knows, maybe maybe we will be bringing somebody in very soon. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. And of course, we have to talk about Indra Muhammad, <laughs> your former player in Pacific Cesar Surabaya. How ecstatic are you to have him again after winning the Defensive Player of the Year? And now he's coming back with you playing for Bima Prakasa Jogja. Yeah, it's uh, it's I'm excited, man. You know, uh, we really worked hard on this one with Indra. Uh, when we found out that he was available, uh, you know, I told the team that we really got to go after him and, and go all out to try to, to to try to get this player because number one, I'm familiar with him and it helps me, uh, you know, with my transition to Bima, uh, him understanding my system, understanding how I work, you know, my practice, all of those things, and then his capability. At the end of the day, in order to win basketball games, you need talent. And I don't, I don't care who you are as a coach. And so uh, he has that talent. He has that ability. Um, he did some good things for us last year. And we're just going to try to keep raising his game to another level. Um, and I think he, he'll do that here with Mima. How about talent? I like your point guard a lot, T-Fun. Yeah. yeah. Have you been impressed with him in these first five days? Whew, I'll tell you, man. Uh, He is a committed basketball player. He comes to the gym early, he stays late, works on it. He does everything coach asked him to do. And one thing I'll tell you, man, he's one of the most fearless players I've been around in this country. He doesn't care if you're bigger than him, older than him, you know, stronger than him. He's going to go at you full speed all the time. And uh, he's performed very well in our scrimmages, very well. Uh, Yesterday, he probably was the best performer in our practice. And uh, he's, he's, I think he can, he can take some big steps this year, potentially, uh, if he keeps his work up. And uh, I think he can do it. Hold you used to play as a point guard too, right? That's right, man. Point guard. So, right. you, and so you and your point guard are going to have a great connection on the court. Like with T-Fun, man, what, what kind of things that you're trying to pass on to him for, the, for oh, yeah. getting ready for the season? Yeah, you know, uh, the big thing here with Bima as well, as well is they've had guards and they haven't necessarily had point guards. Yeah. Um, they've had really good, you know, two guards, three guards, different things like that. We have Adit, we have Nuka, and they're naturally two guards. They're naturally coming off screen, shooting the ball, 
playing from the wing. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll adjust. We're going to mix it up and play different guys at point guard. But I think out of everyone, Tiffon has the most potential. And I think that's his natural position. And so, like you said, as a coach and as a former point guard, we're going to be meeting a lot. We're going to be talking a lot. He's probably going to get the most yelling of anybody because he has to run the team and he has to, you know, uh, you know, have everybody in the right spots and know where everybody's supposed to be. And so, so far he's doing good with it. And I think the best thing with him is he wants to be good at it. Tiffon really wants to be good inside. inside. So I think uh, his motivation is there and he has a lot of drive. And uh, Tiffin is a player of the future for Indonesia basketball. You know, he's only a sophomore, right? Man, <laughs> Putting a lot of pressure yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, no, look, like I said, I just think he's going to take another step from what he did last year. Uh, of course, there's always room to grow. Of course, he's going to make his mistakes just like everybody else. But the big thing for him is, like I said, he has the, the intangibles there. He has the tools to do it and he has the work ethic. So, uh, like I said, Tiffin being as young as grow, he has a lot of room to grow. Yeah. Me as a basketball fan or basketball personality, I'm hoping I'm going to see a four guard lineup with rest two. <laughs> So I'm hoping you're going to play Tifan, Nuka, Adit, and Indra, and Restu. I think that's going to be the Hampton Five lineup for you. Man, <laughs> have, you, have, you been, have, you, have you been in my meetings or what? <laughs> no, no, man. Uh, you know, we're going to look at everything, to be honest. Uh, I'm not a coach that just sticks to one thing and, and not able to adapt and adjust. You know, there'll be different times in the game where we want to play faster and we need to you know, different units are working better. And so we just, we just go with the, uh, go with how the game's going and the game's flowing, but we're definitely going to look at different lineups. I'm not going to tell you, who <laughs> in there. Uh, but you know, there's, there's going to be some, there's going to be some fast, small ball. There's going to be some bigger guys on the floor. Who knows? You just have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. You have one year under your belt in the IBL already. What is the one thing that you picked up that will help you coaching this upcoming season? Uh, just how the game is played here. The game is called, uh, just how the fast paced the game is. It's a very physical game actually, more than I'm actually, I was used to when I initially came, I was like, okay, wow. You know, things are called less here. Uh, it's a bit more physical. And I had to get used to that as a coach, um, as well as, you know, just to play, the style of play. Um, I, actually, I actually really think that the level of Indonesian basketball player is good. Um, and as a local, from a local standpoint. And um, so those are the biggest things for me. Um, but overall, that's probably the biggest thing I'm used to. And then just, like I said, getting to know the players uh, individually and understanding their skills. That's probably it. Um, I think I'm ready though. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready you're, to go. you're ready for the coaching, but are you ready to live in the bubble? <laughs> man, I'll tell you, man, it's, uh, It's, it's 2020, man. Well, it'll be 2021. Yes. Uh, but still, you know, uh, I, we, it's just the new normal at this point. Uh, we have to, you know, accept it and deal with it. And it's a way that we can still play basketball, right? And it's the yeah. safest way. So, uh, you know, I'll be okay with it. I did, a, I did a small bubble in Canada this summer when I coached in the CEBL. Uh, we went to the finals in that one. And we had to kind of, you know, live in a, somewhat of a bubble there. Uh, this one will probably be a bit longer, of course, um, but I'll be okay with it, man. I've, I've, I've quarantined three times already. I've taken a whole bunch of, you know, swab tests and things like that, all negative, but uh, That's so, good. yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll be ready for it. And again, we want to, we want to play basketball. So these are the things that we have to sacrifice. Now I got a question as a coach, as you guys stay in the bubble and you saw the NBA, they stay in the bubble for a while too. Do you think it's going to play some factors into this player's game? You know, it can, especially guys that aren't used to, you know, being away from their uh, routine or normal situation at home or they have families, they have wives. Those things can be difficult, as you saw with some of the guys in the NBA and how the NBA was able to let them allow them to invite some family members as it got later in the year, uh, which is helpful. Um, but, you know, it's never easy, to be honest. Um, my big thing with it is you got to find a routine. Yeah. You got to kind of find new things to do, maybe read some books. Hopefully we can 
go outside a little bit in the bubble. Maybe there's a perimeter that they give us where we can walk around or do some sort of exercise or get some fresh air. Uh, that'll be helpful. Uh, but yeah, you got you got to try to do different things. Maybe learn a new language, learn some okay. English. I need to some Bahasa. Yeah. You know, whatever the case is, uh, we got to be creative. Um, but again, it's it's something we have to sacrifice, you know, in order to play. And I think the fans want to see us play, and we want to play as well. So now I'd like to know your coaching career. How hard is it to be a coach overseas? It's not easy, man. I'll tell you, it's it's not for the it's not for the weak minded. Um, you know, you're you're traveling around, especially me being in when I was in the ABL, uh, you're flying from country to country. Uh, the times of practices are crazy. You're practicing from six to nine p.m. and then you get home. You don't have a life after that, and you're practicing in the morning. And so, uh, it's not normal life for most people. Um, and you know, you're away from your family. Of course, I am. And uh, it's just something that I sacrifice, you know, for the love of the game and what I love to do and where I want to go with my career. And so uh, it's just something I want to keep building my resume, try to win more championships, uh, you know, and I'm young. So I want to keep growing and building. And uh, this is what I'm willing to sacrifice right now in order to, to go where I want to be. But for everybody out there, overseas life is not for everybody. And uh, you really got to have a strong mind uh, with it and be able to sacrifice certain things in order to be successful at it. Will the NBA be your dream job? You know, it is. And in the end of everything, uh, you know, being an NBA coach in any facet, whatever it is, player development, assistant coach, just being involved in that arena uh, is something that I definitely can see myself doing uh, at some point in my career. Um, you know, this summer I was going to look into doing some summer league things mm -hmm. if they had it, of course, uh, didn't work out this year, but I know, you know, next time it does happen, whether that's 2021 or 2022, I will try to get involved in that. Um, I've had some, I have a lot of friends that are in the NBA coaching, uh, I do. And so, uh, you know, I want to continue to try to push for that and strive for that and, uh, You know, Indonesia is one of my stepping stones, and we're going to try to do something special here at BIMA. I know. So I can look back, be in the NBA, and then I can say, man, I was in Indonesia, man. You know, That would be cool. <laughs> shout out. Give a shout out. <laughs> I mean, like, Summer League is the best time of the year. I love Summer League in Las Vegas. Even it's so hot, but it's so fun, though. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Everybody's there, right? You get yeah. to meet so many different people and exchange numbers and contacts and everything so yeah yeah before i let you go i would like to know that you were with saigon heat i bet you've mm. been in the cls gym before right oh man oh. <laughs> how, how was that experience though playing in that rowdy <laughs> tough crowds man yeah man it's a it's real down there i'll be honest man uh You know, I did, I did two years against CLS. Uh, first year, we had some, obviously some success their first season back into or in the ABL. And then they transitioned the next year and upgraded. They started out pretty bad, one and seven. Yeah. They got some numbers with Esho, and it really started rolling with Jawado and Wei Long. And they became yeah. a tough team. They became a real tough team. And I'll say this, and I said this, I've been on record before saying this, that playoff game, Uh, against them, game three was the loudest gym I had ever been in my life. Uh, when they started standing up and they're doing the chants and the claps and they're banging on, you know, the bells and everything and the pots and pans behind our bench, <laughs> and it was crazy. But it was a, it was a really impressive atmosphere. It was really rowdy, and they, you could tell how bad that the fans wanted to win yes. and how yeah. interested and involved they were in the game. And so uh, I think that that also propelled them to win a championship as well. Uh, but it was a great atmosphere. I'll be honest. It was a great atmosphere. And, uh, you know, hopefully I get to be involved in that atmosphere again. We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Before I let you go, I just like to know, uh, I know you uh, coaching under coach uh, Kyle Julius before in Saigon Heat. What was the biggest lesson that you got from, you know, just working under him? Uh, his big, my big thing with coach was, man, he was always prepared. Mm. Uh, he came every day prepared. He had a plan. Uh, he had steps and processes on how to be successful. Uh, he really set a culture uh, with us in Saigon. 
Uh, he showed showed a lot of people the way and how to prepare and how to train. And I really appreciated that from him. Um, you know, a lot of focus on details, um, how to, you know, walk and talk and, and be a pro every day. He played professional basketball as well. So it was something that uh, I really took from him. And we had a good bond, man. We connected really well. Uh, we worked well together. And uh, even still to this day, we work well. We, we do the Canadian League in the summer now. And uh, we try to stay as connected as possible. So hopefully he gets the championship out in Taiwan. And uh, hopefully, you know, we, we surprise some people here in the IBL. I know I'm looking forward because I got you guys as the dark horse this upcoming season. So hopefully... Hopefully you guys are gonna have a big season and gonna have a big season and surprise a lot of people. Coach, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, I know you got you, you got to rest after this, you know, Saturday night, <laughs> nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm tired, man. I still got to catch up on my rest, so I'm sleeping tonight, man. I'm sleeping. Yeah. So all the best for you and Bima Prakasa. Hopefully everybody gonna stay healthy and gonna play the whole season uh, and came out safely. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing for me. So once again, yeah. coach, good luck. And thank you so much for your time. And everybody, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.